myself Dr. M. Lakshmi Devi, Associate Professor in the Department of CSCDS at Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. In this video lecture, we are going to acquaint ourselves with some of the definitions and terminologies associated with arrays. So, what is the concept of array? We have previously discussed in the previous video lectures, I have discussed the concept of arrays along with some examples. You can go through that video lecture. So, here we are going to discuss some of the definitions and terminologies associated with array. So, first coming to the definition of the array, you can uh, see here that it is a data structure. So, array is a data structure that stores fixed to sequence, fixed to size sequence of elements of the same data type. So, array consists of elements of the same data type that is homogeneous elements. So, each elements can be accessed using an index. So, in order to access each element, we need an index. So, let us uh, see what is element here. So, the individual item stored in an array is called as an element. So, elements can be accessed using their index within the array. So, what is index here? So, index specifies, it specifies the position or subscript that represents the location of an element in an array. So, for example, in an array we have five elements. So, in order to access these five elements, we can refer to each of the element by using the index. We can specify the position of the element. So, at what position the element is stored that is specified by index. So, it is the position of subscript that represents the location of an element in an array. So, in this array, so which element is pre uh, present at what particular location? So, that is given by index of the array. So, index starts at 0. So, first element is stored at 0th index and the last element uh, side element is stored at n minus 1. So, here n specifies the size of the uh, array. So, what is the size here? So, index starts at 0 for the first element and it is incrementing by 1 for each subsequent element. So, array elements they are stored contiguously in the memory locations. Next, coming to the size or length. So, size or length of an array gives the total number of ele elements which it can hold. Size of the array. Uh, next, it, it is defined at the time of array declaration and it cannot be changed during Runtime. Next one is declaration. So, there are two terms associated with array. So, we need to declare the array and then after that this initialization. We need to perform initialization. So, process of declaration is nothing but specifying the type and size of the array. So, what type of elements the array will hold. So, that is, uh, that is called as declaration and what is the size of the array. Size determines how many elements it can hold. So, it tells the compiler what type of data the array will store and how many elements it will contain. So, this is the example for that. So, this is declaration of an array. Next one is initialization. So, coming to initialization, it is nothing but assigning values to elements of the array. So, for example, this is an array of size 5. So, first element, first element is 1, next element is 2, 3, 4 and 5. So, this is called as initialization. Next, coming to the types of arrays. So, we have, these are the three types of arrays which we have. First one is one dimensional array, next one is two dimensional array and then multi dimensional array. So, actually these two are uh, multi dimensional, this also comes under multi dimensional array. Now, let us see one by one. So, first one is multi dimensional array. So, an array with a single subscript or index is called one dimensional array. The other name is also is single dimensional array. It represents a list of elements arranged in a linear fashion. So, for example, this is how we declare a one-dimensional array, the data type, name of the array and then the size of the array. So, you can see here the size of the array is fixed at the time of declaration itself. So, maximum elements which it can hold is 5. Next one coming to two-dimensional array. So, two-dimensional array is nothing but is it is an array of one-dimensional array. So, it has two indices. So, it is a specific type of multidimensional array with two indices. It is used to represent matrices or tables. So, whenever we need to represent the information in the form of matrix, then we go for two-dimensional array. So, this is how we declare a two-dimensional array, data type, the name of the array and then the size. So, this specifies the rows, number of rows and this specifies the size of the columns, number of columns here. So, in this matrix, in this uh, 
array. So this is a two dimensional array of size 3 by 4. That means 3 rows and 4 columns. Next one, multi dimensional array. So an array with one or more subscript or index is called as multi dimensional array. So this, this is nothing but it is an array of, so this is a three dimensional array. So it is an array of two dimensional array. So it represents a table of elements organized in rows and columns. Next one is static array. So based upon whether the size can be increased or decreased, we have static array and dynamic array. So static array means the size is fixed at compile time itself and we cannot change the size during program execution. So this is how we declare a static array, uh, data type, name of the array and then size. So once the size is fixed at compile time, we cannot change it afterwards, later on. Next one is dynamic array. Dynamic array is an array whose size can be changed during program execution using dynamic memory allocation functions. So there are memory allocation functions like malloc, calloc, realloc and free. So by using these different functions, we can change the array size dynamically. So this is one example of using malloc function. So malloc function allocates this much amount of memory and it returns a pointer of type this one. So this is how we can interpret this one. Next one is array of pointers. So what is array of pointers here? So as we have array of as we have an array, so which contains some value, which contains uh, some elements. So we also have array of pointers. So it is nothing but we have an array of pointers which stores the address of other elements. An array where each element is a pointer here. So this is often used to create arrays of strings or multidimensional arrays. For example, so this is how we declare an array of pointers to integers here. So array size is 5 here. So each array stores the address of the, stores the address here. Next one is bounds or bound checking. So in order, uh, this term comes into picture regarding to the size of the array. So we don't have any provision uh, when we are declaring the size of the array to check the bounds. So checking the validity of array indices to ensure that they do not go beyond the defined size. So whatever size has been defined, predefined. So in order to check whether the elements are, uh, they are going out of bounds. So we need to do bound checking. So C does not have the provision. It does not perform automatic bound checking. So it is the programmer responsibility to avoiding accessing, to avoid accessing elements outside the array boundaries. So for example, if we declare the size as 5, and if in the program, the programmer is writing, so if he, he or she wants to access the seventh element, then it is the responsibility of the programmer to avoid such errors. Next one is string. So string is also ref represented as an array of characters, which is terminated by a null character. So it is used to store and manipulate sequence of characters. For example, this is how you represent a string. So string, as you can see here, so anything which is there in double, so this is treated as a string. So this is stored in the form of array of characters. So character array is a collection of characters which are stored in contiguous memory locations. In C, strings are commonly represented as character arrays. So this is an example of character array, how to declare a character array. So in the same line, we have declared as well as initialized. Next one is null terminator null character. So null character is used to mark the end of the string in C. So it signifies the termination point of the string and it is essential for functions that process the string. So when you want to define a string, so we need to insert a null character at the end of the string. So when we define the string in this way, the null character is automatically inserted. Next one is string literal. So string literal is also sequence of characters which is enclosed in double quotes. So this is a string literal you can see here. So this is a string literal uh, which is enclosed in double quotes. So it represents a constant string in C and is automatically null terminated. So no need of adding null term, no need of inserting any null character at the end. So compiler will automatically add the null terminator here. Next one is coming to string handling functions. So C provides a set of standard library functions for manipulating strings such as, so these are the different functions which are available in the header file, string.h header file. 
So STR LEN, STR CTY, STR CAT, and STR CMP and others. So there are other functions. So STR LEN is a function which is declared in string dot h header file to determine the length of the string, excluding the null terminator. So it does not calculate the it calculates the length of the string, excluding the null character. Next one is STR CPY. So STR CPY function is used to copy the content of one string to another string. STR CAT function is used to concatenate one string to the end of another string. So STR CMP is a function which is used to compare two strings. So the return type of this is an integer to indicate whether the two strings are equal, greater than or smaller. If the two strings are equal, it will return zero value. It will return non-zero value if in case the two strings are greater or one string is greater than the other or smaller than the other. Next one is, so let us see the difference between the array and string. So we have seen that array is represented as, uh, array is nothing but a sequence of elements, whereas string is also sequence of characters here. So main difference between array and string is, array can hold data of any type. So it can hold data of any type, that means we can declare an array of integers, array of double type data, array of uh, double type and etc. Uh, so on. But string can hold only char data type. So that is the main difference, one of the difference between string and array. Array size must be a constant value. So array size can't be changed once we declare it. But we can change the size of the string by using character pointer. So array is not ended with null character by default. So whenever we declare an array, so at the end, no need to the compiler does not insert the null character by default. But when we declare a string, so string is ended with null character by default. So these are the some of the main differences between array and string. Now let us see some of the applications of array. So arrays are versatile data structures in programming and they find wide applications in various domains. So these are some of the applications which I have listed here. First one is list and collections. So arrays are used to represent list or collection of elements allowing for easy access and manipulation of data. Next one is matrices and multidimensional arrays. So we can use arrays to represent matrices and multidimensional data structures in fields such as mathematics, graphics and scientific computing. Next one string manipulation. Array of characters they are used to represent and manipulate strings in programming languages. So string operations involve treating characters as elements of an array. Next for database manage, database systems also we use arrays. So arrays are used to implement tables and rows in database systems, providing a structured way to organize and access data. Next for sorting and searching algorithms also we use arrays. Next for dynamic memory allocation. So arrays are used in dynamic memory allocation to create resizable data structures such as dynamic arrays or linked list. Next in image processing, we use arrays to represent pixel values in images. Next in signal processing also, we use arrays uh, to represent and process signals such as audio signals or sensor data. Next in data structures, uh, we have wide applications of arrays. For simulation purpose also, we use arrays to simulate real world scenarios such as modeling populations, inventories or physical systems. Next for cryptography, these are employed in cryptography also for various operations such as representing and processing key values or encrypted data. Next for game development, so these are some of the applications which are listed here. So thus we have seen the various definitions and terminologies associated with arrays here in C programming. In the next video lecture, we'll see some more concepts of C programming. Until then, thank you. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.